This is Kat Sturts from rockinyourpath.com with another episode of Fast Action Fridays. I am happy to have a guest repeat their time with me, especially when they are such an expert in the topic we are discussing, which is Facebook and how to attract more clients to your Facebook page. My guest today is Sherry Lee Weisick. And Sherry Lee, thank you for coming back again and sharing your expertise with us. Can you share a little bit about yourself for people who may not be familiar with you yet? Well, Kat, it's an honor to be here. I mean, anybody who asked me to come back a second time um, is, I'm just so grateful for that because if I can, you know, teach your community and serve your community in some way, then I'm so happy to do that. So thank you for inviting me back. Um, who am I? So, you know what? I'm celebrating 10 years in this business, uh, which I'm quite surprised at, to be honest with you. <laughs> um, I really, the 10 years kind of passed very quickly and I know a lot of businesses don't last that long. So I feel extremely grateful that I've been able to do that. And I started my business because I had a desire to help women entrepreneurs specifically, um, although I don't say no to men, the right men that come along are just fine, but to help women entrepreneurs figure out how to run a business around their life so that their business doesn't become their life, so that they have availability to make their kids lunch if they want, homeschool their kids like I did, or um, you know pick their kids up from school afterwards, or travel the world, or retire their husband, whatever it looks like for them. I think your business should be a tool to creating your life. And I discovered Facebook was a tool that I really love and can really figure out how to work to my advantage to allow me to work less and earn more than I've ever learned before, earned before. And that's, that's really what I want to share with people. So my business grew out of that desire and has morphed and changed and I've pivoted so much over the years uh, to where it's at today where I spend a lot of time teaching entrepreneurs how to do that. I do offer done for you services. I speak on it. I'm in the process of writing a book about it as well. So lots of things going on. Oh, that's great. And one of the things I like best is that you haven't grown so much or in ways that you've just created an, a new job for yourself. You've created a, a workable lifestyle for yourself. And those uh, who follow me on Rocking Your Path know that's what I'm all about. We don't want to just mm. change one boss for another boss that makes us work harder and longer and for less rewards than the nine to five job or the other career that we had before yes. we decided to become entrepreneurs ourselves. And yeah, we definitely don't want well, and I, there was there's plenty of time in the 10 years where I did just have a job and where I did work 15, 16 hours uh, a day and seven days a week and I burnt myself out because I didn't know how to do a business differently than as a job. <laughs> you know, I was an accidental entrepreneur really and um, hadn't really ever thought I was an entrepreneur. I was a damn fine employee, even though I was unhappy most of the time as an employee. I was the employee that got hired and a month later was the supervisor because I always was giving more and I came into my business with that same thinking, well, I just work more and I get more, but in your own business, that doesn't always translate. So <laughs> I have definitely been in those places. I'm now in a place where I've gotten smarter about leveraging my time to generate more income, which I, I mean, I, to me, why would I not? Right. I, like you say, I did not do this to make a job. Right. So you've gone from accidental entrepreneur to purposeful entrepreneur. And yeah, Facebook, <laughs> Facebook and learning to leverage Facebook has become your expertise area. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. let's jump right into this. Um, followers of Rocking Your Path and me, Kat Sturts, know that I leverage Facebook pretty well at the, at the moment uh, that we're recording this. And for the last few years, most of my um, income from clients and programs has come through connections I've developed on Facebook. 
And some of the, what I do on Facebook is because I learned from someone like you, you in particular for a lot of that, but you've got four specific tips for us today on how to attract more clients to our Facebook page. And the first question I have for you about that is, why would that be important as opposed to attracting them to a Facebook group or our profile page? Mm -hmm. So there, there tends to sometimes be some confusion about that. There are three main areas on Facebook. Your profile, according to Facebook, and it's their rules that matter, really, because it is their sandbox, but your profile is not supposed to be for doing business. So if you do business directly on your profile, you are at risk of having your profile shut down. Uh, I know a lot of people do business on their profile and a lot of people get away with it and it comes down to when they find you though, they will shut you down. And so why take that risk? Like you and I both, the bulk of 95% of my business comes from Facebook. Why would I risk losing that to use my profile? The other thing is your profile is limited. You can only have 5,000 friends and that sounds like a lot, but when you start getting close to it, you start seeing a limitation there. Why would you want to limit that to 5,000 when there's 2.4 billion people on Facebook? Why limit that? There's no marketing resources for you on your profile. You can't run ads on your profile. You don't get any analytics about who your audience is there. There are ways to use your profile for networking that can definitely benefit your business and your Facebook page. But your Facebook page is really where Facebook wants you to do business directly. Now your Facebook group is a deeper conversation. I use my Facebook page to move people into my group that you know want to get to know me on a deeper level, that want to learn more from me, that want an opportunity to connect with other people and spend more focused time. My Facebook page is really the introduction to me. And then from there, I'm going to move people into different areas, whether it's my website, whether it's uh, my membership site, whether it's my email list or my Facebook group. My Facebook page is the first stop along those ways. And so I want to make sure that I am growing my page and managing my page in a way that makes Facebook happy because when Facebook likes us, they actually work and play with us very nicely. They work with us to help us achieve our goals. And it's, it's the public place. I get marketing and analysis there from Facebook about the people who like my page. There's no limit to how many people I can have liking my page. So the sky's the limit and I don't ever want to put a limit on my reach, my growth, my visibility, and who I can help, how many people I can help. And I want to make clear to those uh, watching or listening to us today, the Facebook page, you have to have a business page in order to have the platform to create and run ads on Facebook I, and Instagram mm -hmm. as uh, it, right mm -hmm. now. But we're not yes. talking about having it in the tips to use Facebook ads in this particular episode. There are a lot of analytics that you still have access to regardless of whether you're running ads or not, correct? Absolutely, absolutely. Right on your page, you'll learn what countries people are coming from, whether they're mostly men or women, age range that they are, what kind of interests that they have. There's so much information that Facebook gives you but I look at my Facebook page and my posts as another opportunity to get to know my audience, to get to know the people in my community. Because the more I know them, the more I can create solutions to their problems, the more I can help them. Oh, that's great. And make sure uh, if you're watching or listening to stay with us to the end of the episode uh, because Sherry Lee has a wonderful uh, free resource for you that kind of highlights all of the four tips she's going to be sharing with us. So why don't you get right into your tip number one? Sure. So once we've got Facebook set up properly, we've got our profile, we need our profile to have a page and we need it to run ads, but we need the page to do business on. And maybe we've got a group, maybe we don't. You have to analyze in your business if you're ready for that yet, because it does add another layer of management and time for you. So you may just have your profile on your page and that's a great place to get started. 
what you want to do then is get people liking your page. And a lot of us start out by inviting our family and friends to like our page. And they will mostly come and, and be supportive of us and help us. And we might get our first hundred likes that way. But again, we're limiting ourselves. We want to reach farther than that. So the first thing we want to do is grow our page with highly targeted people who would be interested in knowing what we do if they just knew that we existed. So we can do that in a variety of ways. Running an ad to do that will be much quicker than doing it organically, but you can make sure that you've set your page up so that when people see it, it is representing who you are and what you do and it appeals to them. You can make sure you're using your content properly so that Facebook is playing nice and you won't be complaining about the reach being bad anymore, or Facebook working against you because that just doesn't happen uh, when you're doing it properly. But growing your page with targeted, engaged people is first thing that we wanna do because if we don't have people in our sphere, how are they ever going to know that we exist and how are we ever going to be able to help them with their mission? So step one, grow. Okay. So grow and there'll be other links that I'll be sharing um, um, that you can check Sherry Lee out and get her other tips about what you need, the basics you need on that page to make sure that you've got those things in place. All right. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. tip one is grow. Tip two grow. is what? Tip two is engage the people that you've now invited to like your page. So somebody sees your page and they go, oh, that looks interesting. I'm going to throw a like on it. And then they expect that you will make sure you're in their newsfeed, that they, they will not come and search for you. They won't come and look for you most of the time. I mean, there's always exceptions, but for the most part, they aren't going to go and hunt you down to find you the day after they've liked your page. They expect you to show up in their newsfeed. So creating engagement, and I teach a system that is based on the 80-20 rule. So four of your posts should be around giving you the reader of your post an easy opportunity to like, comment, and share. Everything we do in those four posts is about getting more likes, comments, and shares. When we do that, Facebook pays attention. The algorithm that we hear about pays attention, sees that we're getting likes, comments, and shares, decides that we are interesting to our audience. So they then show that post to more people, show the next post to more people. So we want to be focused on getting likes, comments on shares on every post we possibly can so that Facebook will play nice and give us greater reach because they want to show interesting things to their community of 2.4 billion. They want their community to stay on Facebook, be entertained, be educated, but also be interactive. They don't want them to be passive on Facebook. So if we can give them that opportunity to like, comment, or share, they are now being interactive. Facebook says, oh, you're one of those pages that's doing it right, we love you, and we're gonna show that post to even more people without having to do an ad or without any of the problems that we hear about. So four posts are um, entertaining, they're fun, they're light. People don't want to come onto Facebook and bare their souls for the most part. We want to give them an easy way to interact with us. And then the fifth post, the one out of every five post, is going to be more in the lines of promotion, educational, informative. You might drive people to your website. Facebook's going to be nicer to that promotional post because of the work we did on the four posts before it so that you know we don't have to have as much ad budget or any ad budget if we don't have it. So this gets Facebook to play nicely with us when we engage our audience. The other side of it is we learn about our audience in ways that we didn't learn about before. Quite often I see people saying, you know, I've had this experience or here's an inspirational quote. What do you think about this? Or, and we're asking people to go too deep with us before we've really established a relationship with those. So we do want to ask some lighter hearted questions. What are your plans for the weekend? Now, if somebody says, you know, if a bunch of people say, well, I'm gardening, it's the spring, I'm gardening. Even if your business is not about gardening, but you're personally a gardener, you've now found a topic of rapport with your audience. 
And when people can interact with you and feel like they know you and feel like you have a shared connection with them, then they are much more likely to stay attentive to your posts and be available and open to your invitations when you make them. I'm glad you brought up the, the point about gardening because I mean, in business, I offer business and marketing, uh, coaching and consulting and writing. I like gardening. It's not something, it's not a service I provide. Mm -hmm. But if I know that my followers, a good number of them, enjoy gardening themselves, I can always include an anecdote in my copy on my blog post or in mm -hmm. my emails or even on my Facebook posts that, that alludes to gardening and then makes the transition into business or marketing tips, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The thing that we do a lot on our Facebook pages that doesn't serve us is we think our Facebook pages are all about us. <laughs> and they're really not. They are a source of conversation starting so that we can get to know people. And when we do that, people get to know us. Now, not only do does Facebook play nice, but now when somebody likes, comments, and shares on your post, more people get to see your post, which means you attract more people to you. So instead of chasing people to like your page, you are attracting people. So I'm a single mom early on meals were a challenge for me when we were, you know, really busy and we were running around to things and what was I going to do for dinner? And I wanted to have good meals for the kids, but who's got an hour to cook a meal seven nights a week. It's crazy. So one of the things I started doing early on, because I knew my audience were a lot of moms, a lot of single moms, a lot of working moms. Once a week, I shared a recipe on my Facebook page. Now, what does that have to do with Facebook marketing? Nothing except it attracted other people to me who understood that I understood their struggle, what they were challenged with right now. And I gave them tips. Now, some of them were not in business. Some of them were executives or they were, you know, they worked for a corporation. Well, some of them turned into opportunities for me to be invited into that corporation because they had a warm, nice feeling towards me. Right there. Mm -hmm. When somebody says, Hey, we need somebody to help us with a Facebook strategy in the board meeting. They went, well, there's this person on Facebook that I follow and she's got great tips and they actually see my tips because I shared recipes with them. We shared that connection. So this is the piece that is so much fun because once, once you start getting people liking and commenting and sharing your posts, it's addictive. You want to go onto your page and see what, what comments are there? Who can I interact with? What relationships can I have? And that's great. That by itself isn't going to grow your business, but it's such an important part of growing your business on Facebook. Oh, that is such solid information and a reminder for us. And we don't have to spend 24 seven doing this either. No. Mm -mm. So I want to make sure we get to tips three and four. Tip so three, three is collect leads. So now we've got conversation. Now we have people who know us. Now we need to nurture them and move them along in, you know, what our funnel or whatever it is we call it into this sequence and collect leads. Now, typically when we think of leads, we think of email addresses, getting people to sign up for your email list. Mm -hmm. That's not the only leads that we talk about. Yes, getting people to sign up to your email list is super important. Getting people to message your page so that you can now communicate with them again is also important. That's a lead. Getting people to watch your videos and having a video view audience, that's a lead. Getting people to your website, they're a lead, and there's ways to nurture them. So we have to have a strategy on how we're going to get these people, not just to like and comment and share on our posts, but also to take these other actions so that we now have multiple places we can touch and connect and build rapport and get to know them while they get to know us. So collecting leads is tip number three. And tip number four then, of course, is getting to the sales, making the invitation, getting to the place where now when you're inviting somebody into a program or to buy something or a service that you offer, they know you already. And we are much more likely to buy from people that we know, like, and trust than people we've never heard of before. So if we see an ad from Tony Robbins, Probably no problem. You'd never have to have interacted with him, but he's got 
that no like and trust relationship because of the size of his brand and his audience. So he automatically has it. But if we see somebody new that we've never seen before, he's got the exact same post as Tony Robbins. Let's say he's got word for word the same thing. Would we be as likely to jump on buying from him? No, because we have no recognition or rapport with that person. So the three steps have led to building a greater rapport so that when we do invite people, it's a no-brainer. People say, yeah, I want to do that because they know you care about them. Mm. I love what you said when you were explaining tip three about leads, because you're right. A lot of us do think of leads as only the number of people we can get to sign up to our email mm -hmm. list. Mm -hmm. But when we're using social media, especially, mm -hmm. knowing how to nurture those other types of leads is just as important. Absolutely. Absolutely. And to recognize that somebody coming to your page, they're a type of lead. They're a fairly cold lead still, but they've taken the time to like your page. What do we want to do next for them? They're liking the page as step one. We want them now to get to know us. We want to get to know them, but I consider everybody who's liked my page as a lead. And if you do, do step into Facebook ads, you can actually use that to target those people. Mm -hmm. And they know you a little bit better than the person who's never heard of you before because they've heard of you enough to like your page. Now we need to get them to know us a little bit more and then a little bit more before we make the invitation. And that process doesn't have to take super long. I've had people go through that process of not knowing me at all, liking my page, engaging with my content, becoming a lead, and then buying you know, a $500 product from me within 48 hours. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to take long if you've got the strategy to move them through those steps, but you have to think through it first. Right. No, I agree. In fact, a lot of my um, private clients have gotten to know me and trust me through my uh, interaction with them on Facebook. And rather than me saying, here, I have this coaching program, I get messages that say, I'm interested in coaching with you. And that's an yes. inbound lead. And yeah. they've already done all of the hard work of convincing themselves uh, whether or not they even want to consider working with you. Yeah, And it's because I've, out of sincerity, laid down the groundwork about who I want to work with and what um, I can offer in return. Yes. Yeah. Right. And you're visible to them. They see you and the interaction that you get and the connection that you have with other people helps you to be seen more by new people. And through, you know, you are definitely one of the people that does Facebook so well and you connect and you, you show your heart on Facebook to people. And I think that really attracts because it can be very clinical and cold. And we think, well, this is a, a medium I have to write things properly. I can't have a spelling mistake. I have to <laughs> present everything perfectly. And we get stuck in that perfect itis and we have to, you know, it takes us forever to craft the perfect post. Sometimes, most of the time, people just want to see who you are. Mm -hmm. And I strongly encourage all of my clients, all of my customers, students to just let people see who you are. I do Facebook lives and the dogs bark, you know, it happens. What can you do about it? I do, you know, Facebook lives and I've got this hair that's bugging me today and it wasn't, I moved my hair at one point and it, it was fine until then. And now that thing won't move, but <laughs> that's part of the imperfectness because People don't want to see you with perfectly coiffed hair that never moves and perfect makeup and a script and lighting. They don't want to be watching a newscast. They want to connect with you. And that's what you do really well, Kat. Well, thank Facebook. you. And I want to point out to people that when Sherry says that I bear my soul and other people who are good at connecting, we're not whining. We're not showing right. all of the bad things that have happened. And I've had plenty of bad things and unfortunate things happen in my life. And yeah, do I mention those occasionally? Occasionally. But it's not a wine fest when, when uh, people follow me. You're right. In fact, yeah. a lot of people will say, I love to follow you because it's upbeat. I know that I go there and something's either going to make me laugh or make me giggle or warm my heart because it's a baby animal 
And in order to do that, you have to have boundaries set. Mm -hmm. I know what my boundaries are about what I do and do mm -hmm. not post on Facebook. And I know you mm -hmm. didn't mention that specifically, but that's part of creating a plan for mm -hmm. how you want to engage with people on Facebook mm -hmm. is understand what you do and do not want to do on Facebook and then live within the, the boundaries you set. For it's sure. not about censoring anybody else and it's not about censoring yourself. It's about choice and taking responsibility for those choices. Right? Absolutely. And I always tell people be personal, on Facebook without being intimate, right? Like, I, I mean, people know a lot about my story. They know how my marriage ended. They know how my business started. They know these things. Do they know like the down and dirty nitty gritty details? <laughs> you know, no. And, and I use those stories as learning opportunities as an opportunity to say to somebody, you know, I get that you might be in a bad place right now and you can't see how things are going to change. Now, if I said that and I never shared my story when I felt that way, would they believe me or would I just sound like another marketing person saying all the things that need to be said to convince somebody to buy? But if I then include in there, I know how you're feeling because I've been there. Believe me. And, and tell them a little bit about how I've been there. This now becomes, you know, my misfortune becomes an opportunity to empower and uplift others. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, that was, that's been a big part of why I do what I do because mm -hmm. we all go through crap in our lives. <laughs> it's how we present it. Nobody really cares what you've gone through. It's how you get up from it. Right that matters, how you react to it. Right, exactly. Um, people know me as the purgatory relief coach for people who think marketing is hell. And one of the <laughs> number one things that has people thinking that marketing is hell is exactly what we're talking about. Is like, how do you walk that line between being vulnerable and sharing of your past and your present struggles and making a living and an income so you can be of service to others. And it takes, it doesn't just happen. You have to make choices and be responsible for those choices. Mm -hmm. I love Facebook for a number of reasons. I know it gets a lot of bad raps, but without Facebook, I wouldn't be able to stay in touch as well as I do mm -hmm. with my large family. I've got a lot of uh, half sisters and brothers out there. Um, I wouldn't be able to connect with some of my cousins that I had no way of contacting until we found each other on Facebook. So there's a lot of good on social media as mm -hmm. well as those things we don't like. And Sherry Lee, you can help with this question. Okay. Because you've explained how following your tips can help us gain more followers, more leads, more engagement on our Facebook page. And then in turn, Facebook helps um, present us to more people because they feature us more in the feeds. Mm -hmm. Isn't it true that if you don't like seeing all that negative, either stop following some people <laughs> Or stop liking, stop responding, mm -hmm. stop. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do it with sure. the people that you want to engage with, that you do resonate with, and you will stop seeing some of that other garbage that you don't want to see. Absolutely. I mean, the algorithm works in both ways for us, right? We, we get frustrated because, oh, I posted and nobody saw my post, and Facebook's out to get me. The algorithm is, is you know, working against me. Um, no, you probably just aren't posting the right stuff. You aren't posting stuff that people are finding interesting. And why would Facebook put things in the newsfeed that nobody is engaging with? Mm -hmm. They want people to stay engaged and inter interactive on Facebook. So if you're seeing a lot of stuff consistently from somebody, sure, you can unfollow them. I do that a lot because I'm really protective about my newsfeed. I don't get it when people complain about all the negativity they see in their newsfeed. I look at my newsfeed and go, are you kidding? I love it. I see only what I want to see because 
if the page is posting stuff that's too much, I just go and unlike them or I stop interacting with their content and like within seven days, they disappear. Mm -hmm. Or if it's a profile, I just unfollow them and I never have to see their stuff again. So I'm totally in control of my experience on Facebook on both sides as the user and as the marketer. Mm -hmm. I love Facebook's feature about snooze somebody for 30 days. Yeah, I use that yeah, a yeah. lot during yeah. the political season. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so that's going to be for a while, longer than 30 <laughs> days, maybe. Exactly. All right. So if you're watching this episode, you're going to see about now a link to uh, get Sherry Lee's uh, free resource, which is about the four tips she mm -hmm. explained today. If you're listening to the podcast, make sure that you go to rockinyourpath.com, search for Fast Action Fridays in this episode with Sherry Lee, and you'll find the link conveniently there for you. Thank you so much for returning. And just to share with people, we recorded this twice because a few <laughs> weeks ago, the platform we use to record, Zoom, suddenly stopped recording and we didn't realize until the end of the recording that we did not have a recording other than the intro. So things happen, you redo them, and you get them out there and you just keep marching along. So thank and you, Sherry Lee. <laughs> I think this one is even better than the last one. Oh, good. I'm glad. <laughs> I know there's a ton of information. And yours is one of the uh, groups that I am active in because there's always information to learn because Facebook does change mm -hmm. how it operates and what's best practices. Your emails, I'm also on your email list, so I do open emails because there's information there. So if you're interested in growing your following and your clientele and your business, whether you're brick and mortar or a coach consultant like we are, you're going to want to follow Sherry Lee Wysick. All Thank right. You. Well, I'm going to wrap today's up. So this is Kat Sturts from rockinyourpath.com closing another episode of Fast Action Fridays. Be sure to come back next week when I have another great guest. In the meantime, remember to keep rocking your unique path to success. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. <laughs>